Morning, everybody. We got some uh, work to do this morning. Got to change this tire and change the oil and grease this darn thing. And the wind's already picked up, so that's fun. I'm going to roll the hood and see if I can't show you all this bad spot over here. Okay, so I don't know if y'all can tell it real good right here, but it's wearing this this side down right here really a lot faster than anywhere else, which this part of the tire that's up is not even the worst part. So I'm going to bust out my tools and my tire and get over here and change her, and then I'll... Uh, Roll around the worst spot and show you all that. Alrighty. We need us some balancing beads and an 11R24.5, which is right here. So now we have to move some stuff out of the way, get the bead axe out, get the gold bar out, and the shotgun. I don't know what that's actually called, but that's what I call it. So dig around in here in the toolbox, get a bunch of other stuff, chalk blocks, tire irons, jacks, whatever. sockets tire iron jack now we got to put the chalk blocks in be sure it doesn't roll when I jack it up that would be embarrassing okay so now we got to get the Gravel cleared out of the way so the jack will set down level. Jack up the truck. If I could figure out how to get the jack handle assembled. Need some Jeopardy music. All right, now we're off to the races. Will the tire roll? Yes. Ah, uh, one more pump. Now we just get the lug nut covers off, and then I'll show you all the bad spot on the tire. So right here, the tire looks pretty normal. Right there is a pretty good wear spot. As you can see, as I roll it around here, the wear becomes more excessive, so it's not wearing evenly. But anyways, it's wearing this outside real bad. It's almost worn down to nothing right there. This little groove right here. And then as you roll the tire on around, 
it starts getting a little better right there right there it's not too bad but anyways it's wearing this outside rib here unevenly see right here is a good a good way to look see these little ribs these little tabs right here watch here in a minute they'll disappear see right there now they're gone and that one spot they're gone right there then they come back and then they're gone in a couple of little places again so i know the camera's not showing it that good right there you can tell pretty good but it's wearing pretty silly so off with this one and on with the new one those are balancing beads inside there that you can hear now i have to gas up the air compressor be sure it doesn't run out of gas halfway through the job on me Now we got gas in the air compressor. Got to clean up my mess and start it up. Get some other tools gathered up here before we start. Valve core remover, inch and a half socket, air tool oil. Dish soap is a very important component of any tire job. Ask me how I know. Got to get these air hoses and everything drug out. Now I'm going to get a tire iron down to pry the wheel off the studs and a mud flap down to keep the wheel from getting scarred up in the gravel. Put the socket on the end of the impact here. And then here comes the fun part in just a minute. Oh yes, the Ugga Duggas. Now I'm going to kill this air compressor so I don't have to sit here and listen to it this whole time. Now we've pried the wheel off the studs. We're going to lay it on the ground with the outside of the tire facing up, lubricate around the wheel, remove the valve core, and break the bead on that side. Then flip it over, break the inside bead, and start prying the tire off the wheel. The reason you want the outside of the tire facing up is so you don't have to waste time and energy flipping the tire excessively and unnecessarily whenever you just lay it on the ground, break the bead, flip it, break the bead, and then pop the tire off the rim. So this tool I have here is called a valve core remover. I'm going to remove the valve core from the stem, and that'll let all the air out of the tire. Now that the air is out of the tire, I'm going to use dish soap for lubrication to pull the tire off the wheel once I break the bead. This tool I'm grabbing here is called a bead axe. I'm going to slap the sidewall of the tire until the bead breaks. Pretty self-explanatory. Now the bead's broken, I'm going to flip the tire over and repeat the process. Now there are a hundred ways to do this next part. 
I'm gonna use the gold bar to pop the inside of the tire over the inside of the rim. Then I'm gonna grab a tire iron to pop the tire the rest of the way off. Some guys use the gold bar to get the tire all the way off the wheel, but I find that's oftentimes a whole lot more trouble than it's worth. Now the tire's off the wheel, time to center the wheel back up on the mud flap and go get the new tire, put some soap on it, slap it on. Now I'm gonna use my hands to put soap on both beads of the tire. The reason I don't use a brush is just to avoid making a mess. Now I'll lay the tire on the wheel and use my body weight to force the outside bead over the inside side of the wheel and up against the outside side of the wheel. Now the tire is halfway on, so I'll stand on one side and then I'll use a tire iron to work the bead slowly over the rest of the wheel, leaving one tire iron between the bead and the wheel so when I work my way to the last little bit, I can just grab that last little bite with both tire irons and work the last remainder of the bead over the side of the wheel. Now the tire's on the wheel, gotta air it up, get the bead to seat. Uh-oh, looks like I forgot to put some balancing beads in my tire. It's all right, no big deal. I can just lay them on the sidewall in between the sidewall and the rim. Push down on the sidewall a few times, they should fall right in. Now I'm gonna pull out the air hose and the chuck to air up the tire with, but the tire is not gonna take care because the bead won't seat. So I'll grab the shotgun, try to use it, fail the first time, try it again then as soon as I lay it up there on the wheel the tire magically decides to start taking air but I think I go ahead and blast it anyway I can't remember let's find out Looks like I decided to deprive myself the joy of my toys. Now there's enough air in the tire to keep the bead seated while I install the valve core, but I'm gonna have some trouble with it, so I have to lay it on the ground, stick one hand inside the wheel to guide the valve core into the stem, and then screw it in with the hand that's outside the wheel still.
Now the tire's aired up, so I'm going to come over here and spray some WD-40 on the lug studs to help the nuts go on easier here in a minute. This particular style of wheel I'm using is called a bud style wheel or a stud pilot style wheel. So basically it uses the lug studs to center the wheel up on the hub instead of the hub like the modern hub pilot wheels do. There's a conical shape on the inside of the lug nut that meets up with the wheel that sets in the inverted conical shape on the wheel to center the wheel up on the hub. So basically what I want is for these studs to be clean and lubricated. That way, whenever I get the wheel propped up on the studs, I can screw a nut all the way on there and center up the wheel properly by hand and not take a chance on installing the wheel uncentered and torquing it down with an impact causing damage. Now it's time for my favorite part, more Ugga Duggas. Everybody gets an Ugga Dugga. There's an Ugga Dugga for everybody coming right up. Now that the appropriate amount of Ugga Duggas have been done to the truck, we can go ahead and let the jack down and start the cleanup process. Leave that be for the time being. Now we gotta put all these lug nut covers back on here, one by one. Okay, so more tire stuff. Um, these uh, drive tires on the rear axle, they're wearing kind of egg-shaped. Right now we've got a pretty good side up, but uh, you can darn sure tell whenever I get into some dirt and then drive on some concrete bobtail, all the clean spots in the tire shine through and really uh, accentuate the irregular wear. So the brakes on that drive axle, are getting you know pretty thin so here in a few months whenever they get ready to change what i'll do is i'll change those brakes on that front drive axle then i'll move these rear drive axle tires to the front the front to the rear and then wear these drives the rest of the way down and then i should have enough steers laying around to make me a set of drives here so i don't have to go buy a new set but uh, me and Tate are going to do some swapping. I've got some low pros and that he needs, and he's got some talls, tall 24s that I need. So we're going to do a little horse trading on the deal and help each other out there. So anyways, but uh, <clears throat> we got this new tire mounted up and everything, and we'll see how she does. Didn't get much life out of that last one. Uh, I know what y'all are saying. Oh, why don't you go get it fixed? Well, a couple of reasons. Um, one, it needs a new spring right here. The spring is almost totally de-arched. That's not something I can do myself because I don't have a concrete floor. I could do it, but if I were to get into a pickle and the, the ground were to start giving, I'd basically be helpless. So 
that's something I'd have to have a shop do more than likely. So, uh, I don't know that I will or won't do it yet, but before I, you know, go to screwing with alignments and this and that and the third, I need to get that spring replaced right there. And I pulled a set of Goodyear LHSs off of this truck that were old when I got it and they were wearing really good. And, uh, so I went on there with a set of Toyos, which are a little cheaper tire. That's all I could find. But I'm kind of hoping this is a Firestone, a little more reputable brand. I'm, I'm hoping it maybe it won't wear, wear like that. But of course, you know, we'll see. Anyways, here's the new uh, $40,000 motor. That's what that looks like. Fun stuff. Let's go ahead and check the grease in it while we're sitting here. Well, I started it up this morning, I forgot. I started it up and moved it over here. So, well, let me get over here where the camera will focus. Yeah, I think it's just nearly a gallon low again. This thing has got a, it's got a two gallon safe zone on this dipstick. So, I think she's just nearly a gallon low again. Which, the rings haven't seated yet. We've got about, I've got about 10,000 miles on it on the motor now 80 900 9000 somewhere something like that but anyways i'm not gonna do changing the oil because dragging the camera around slows me down and starting it and stopping it and this and that and it's gonna be about 173 bozillion degrees a day uh it's gonna be hotter than the gate hinges of hell so i want to get this stuff done quickly but anyways thank y'all very much for watching and uh Oh yeah, I have to update y'all on the Packard engines. I'll get around to that one of these days, I swear. So, they're doing good, long and short of it, but I do have a few stories. So anyways, thanks for watching, and uh, we will catch y'all guys some other time. Take care.